Oh, we forgot to tell people our podcast is every Sunday. So now I say that. <laughs> our podcast is every Sunday. Don't forget to watch. I know here in Querétaro, uh, international schools are very affordable. Taking your money and being able to spend more on your kids and have fun, you're definitely going to be able to do that here. Buying popcorn, I think, was like $12 or $15. Like, it's like cr crazy. Popcorn. For popcorn. For popcorn. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome back and welcome to our podcast. Uh, again, for those who don't remember, I'm Roddy. I'm Lendi. Uh, and today, I think we're just going to kind of jump in and talk about um, what it's like and should people, you know, move to Mexico with kids or what is it like with Mexico to have kids? Mm -hmm. right? Obviously, this is something very near and dear to our heart. Again, even the title of our blog is Life with Louis, our son. Um, so what do you think, you know, about kids in Mexico or bringing kids to Mexico, the pros, the cons? How would you start? I think the pro is give kids a different environment, especially in the culture and the language. You may say, oh, the kids are too young. They don't understand this. But it's important, especially when Louis started to go to daycare. He was over one year old right after the birthday. And yeah. he's just jumping into the eight hours straight Espanol language, <laughs> Spanish only. In the daycare, it's not a bilingual. We right even on. didn't choose to go to bilingual school. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, mm -hmm. I, I think especially at this time, obviously, there's going to be all range of kids moving to Mexico with their families, right? Ours is, happens to be very young. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think younger children are very resilient when mm -hmm. it comes to language. The earlier you put them to the language environment, it's even better. Sure. It's uh, easier uh, for them to learn. Right. I, I can even notice just even now, I know, you know, he was here for about a year uh -huh. uh, in daycare and he kind of picked up a little bit of Spanish and he could definitely count and do And he definitely understood very well. We, uh, we went back to the U.S. and again, I think he kind of lost a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, his, his English increased Phenomenal, uh, you know, it really grew. But I think okay. that's also just the time uh, for his age, you know, between right. two and a half and three. Uh, but now, even coming back, you know, I was a little bit worried about, you know, how he forgot. I, I knew he still knew a few things. He knew his colors and how to count. Mm -hmm. uh, but even now, I hear him outside talking to the friends, and I, I'm already kind of hearing him speak a little bit more. Uh, and when I asked uh, the lady at the daycare, you know, how's he doing? I said, no, no, he speaks a lot in, in Spanish. And I was like, really? Like, <laughs> which is a surprise to me. Yeah. Uh, and I did because, and it makes sense. We obviously both speak English to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, he just speaks English to us. Yeah. It just makes sense. But uh, the fact that she said, no, you know, he speaks Spanish quite a bit <laughs> and he understands, uh, it made me feel good. And, and I think this is true of all children. So yeah. I think it's very good to bring your kids here, uh, you know, for the new experience of just living here, but also they can truly become bilingual. And yeah, again, I feel so proud of my son because he's so young and his Spanish is much better than mine. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't go so far, but I, know I think that. so. It put me to daycare eight hours. <laughs> I would be lost. <laughs> Maybe, but you, you, you probably pick it up pretty quick. Uh, but, you know, I, I definitely do think kids, you know, one of the big advantages of bringing kids here is that they can become bilingual pretty quickly. They're, they're going to yeah. be immersed in the language. Uh, and, and I think that's true for anybody. I, but I think as adults, you know, we don't pick up language as quickly as, sure. as kids. I mean, they're, you know, again, their minds are literally like a sponge. They can just absorb so quickly. Mm. Uh, so I think that's definitely one of the good things about bringing kids here. Uh, I think another thing, something we talked about a couple of days ago was, you know, I, I know we lived in a very specific area back in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, or not even Houston, outside of Houston, uh, where there weren't that many kids around. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know one of the biggest things I've noticed, and Right away, within you know, it takes about three days to kind of get back into the swing of things. But by the third or fourth day, uh, Louis was back outside playing, and he was playing with all the kids in the neighborhood. Something he we just did not have back in Houston. And you know, I know we lived in kind of in a different kind of rural area where there wasn't many kids around. Yeah. But I think even when we were, were in Houston before, and I think yeah. a lot, and, and again, maybe tell me if I'm right or wrong about this out there. Uh, but I, we just don't, or I don't get the sense of there's as many kids playing in the streets as there was when we were younger. I remember when I was young, That's, yeah, you know, and you talked about it in the alleyways. I mean, kids would just get together and play outside mm -hmm. all day, you know, and you don't really see that as much in the U.S. You know, as soon as we came back, you know, we have about 15, 18 kids between, he's probably the youngest at three, uh, up to maybe about seven or eight, right? And, and, and they just go outside and they run around and they play and hide and seek and ride on bicycles. And it's just so great, you know, to see him play with so many kids outside. Again, not just being stuck, uh, in, you know, inside, you know, playing video games, watching TV, iPad. 
he does that enough. <laughs> yeah, I remember I keep saying when we were in outside Houston area, we went to some park, has a playground in the middle. My question is, I always like, where are the kids? Where are the kids? Yeah. Right. You barely see any kids. Only once we went there, there are a few kids. So they play together. Right. And the rest of the time, I said, today is not even hot. It's very <laughs> nice. After the rain, it's breezy. Yeah. A little bit sun, but that was 6 p.m. Yeah. Nobody there. Nobody. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's really great for him to be here. You know, he gets his play time uh, in the daycare, picks up his language, and then he can take what he learned, right? And he gets to come play with kids who all speak Spanish. I mean, they're all, yeah. uh, every kid he plays with here is, is, is a, you know, our local, our Mexican. Right? So all they do is speak Spanish. And a few of them speak a little bit of English. Yeah. Uh, but again, he really gets to practice that uh, Spanish right away. Yeah, that's what I, th I hope my kids can enjoy those, just kids playing time. Yeah. Yeah, they play, even there's no playground in our neighborhood. But they're, they just run around. There's a big lawn. Big lawn, yeah. Yeah, they run around, play bicycle, race, or mm -hmm. anything. And they pretend they're different animals and things and tag. And, and uh, hide, hide and, and seek. seek. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great. It's, it's, it allows kids to be kids here, uh, yeah. which I think is something that's really kind of missing back in the U.S. Obviously, you know, we're, where we're from in Houston, when I was back home in McAllen, it's very small. The U.S. is obviously bigger, but... Uh, I think I hear this in more than one spot. I don't think it's only that. I don't think it's only localized to our region. I think it's kind of becoming an issue more along all the United States, right, and maybe other parts of the world as well. So it's great to see that here. Even when we go out to the parks outside, uh, you see kids yeah. out there and families out there just walking around and just people constantly out there, and it's great. So I, mean, I think that's one of the best things about bringing your family here to Mexico. Yeah, especially nowadays, all the kids just stay at home on the video games, watch TV, or phone, iPad, right. it's too much. Right. And again, I, mean, I know we're guilty of that as well. We also I'm, do not that. Saying, I'm not saying we're the perfect parents and only let them play, no. but yeah. uh, but it, at least he has the ability and the time and he enjoys doing that. Right. Right. So yeah, definitely having that time is is with kids outside is great. Um, and another thing I think is the schools. Sure. It's our most parents are curious about the school system here. Like we chose the city here is Queletalo, Mexico, Central. Yeah, we have many international schools here. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a big question for a lot of parents when they come here is, you know, should I keep my, should I put my kid in a, in a uh, local school or an international school? Yeah. Uh, and we really can't speak for uh, the, the local schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, just purely looking online from what I've read, the overall idea or theme is that, you know, the Mexican local schools are not as good. And, and I think a lot of that just comes from being underfunded. They, they just don't um, have the money you know, yeah, to have the yeah. things you know, to, to, to do as compared to international schools. Uh, I know here in Querétaro, uh, international schools are very affordable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, you know, we haven't really gone into looking at them yet, like in, in full-blown, let's go pick one, uh, because we're not quite there yet. But I think just from looking around a little bit online from what we saw was what maybe uh, for the one outside of our uh, Neighborhood, mm -hmm. I think, what do we say that was maybe four or five hundred dollars a yeah, month? Yeah, like averagely maybe four to five hundred US dollars a month. A month, which is very good for international school. I mean, we're talking uh -huh. about international school standards. Uh, and, and the one outside our neighborhood is a French school. Uh, but again, I think that's kind of the general payment we've heard and seen from any international school around Querétaro. Yeah, and and I, I know in Mexico City, the can, price can go up a lot. Sure. But uh, also varies what, which school you send your kids to. Correct. Right? And like, I know mm -hmm. the American school there is very expensive. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, I, we had a friend, right, Marlon, who worked there. Yeah, I think oh, he worked at the American okay. school. And again, so he's talking about a lot of like, diplomats, uh, you know, uh, uh, foreign diplomats and you know, very, very wealthy. That's where they sent their kids to. So obviously mm -hmm. that was the most expensive school, if I'm not mistaken, Mexico City. Um, but again, that's a very different high level school. Uh, you know, there may have been some more affordable ones. Again, we do not know what other ones cost. I can only speak on that because I had one friend who worked there. <laughs> and so that's all I'm basing my opinion on. Yeah. Uh, but again, going to other smaller towns, uh, it's definitely going to be more affordable uh, for right. international school. Uh, so again, they still have the standards that you know, if your kid wants to go uh, back to university you know, in the U.S. or go abroad, again, they can still meet those standards and be able to apply for those colleges and universities uh, um, and, and progress with their education if they choose. Right. right. I think uh, not only Caleta Law, Mexico City, if we talk oh. about other major cities like, sure. the, like in the north, uh, Melida. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, pretty much any yeah, big. Yeah, Puerto Vallada, Guadalajara, the like big cities. Right. They're all going to have uh, international find schools. find more, more choices. Yeah. You know, and then you know, even places like Ahí, because they said they had international school. I remember somebody yeah. left a comment, we have an international school here, too. Right. Uh, again, yeah. they may not have the choice, but at least mm -hmm. they do have one, right? L yeah, like in the matter long form, people talk about, I saw some people post maybe a few, mm -hmm. four or five 
international schools right. there. Which is a very uh -huh. what you get. So if you have kids and you want them to go, kind of have that standard uh, mm -hmm. of a Western style education or U.S. or however you want to define it, yeah. um, IB, I know it's another popular form of education. Again, you can definitely get that for a very reasonable price. Um, you know, so again, moving on from school, like I know that's important, uh, but it's also things to do away from home, right? Again, you know, kind of in your daily life, you want if for outside activities, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, Mexico does offer a lot of these things. And again, for things you may have to pay for, they're also very reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, oh, can, it can yeah. be things as simple as taking your kids out to <laughs> parks, right? Or to the, to the movie. Or to or the to water the park. Or to the water to park. To the zoo. To the zoo, right? Yeah, like back in Houston, the price just jump up a lot. We checked the Moody Garden the other day, which is in, on the Galveston mm -hmm. Island, mm -hmm. which is an aquarium and other kids' playthings. Like everyone, like adults, $65 person, kids, yeah. 55 We checked some um, kids' museum. How much was that? Uh, like, the, like the, somewhere the 20. One, I, think, I think the Woodlands one was like 20 or 25 I mean, Yeah. That's per person. But then right. the thing is, if everyone, three of us go, plus tax, some online booking service, this, whatever, <laughs> yeah, then you get there, you buy food, everything, it's a day trip, easily $100. Yeah, yeah at the minimum, or, at the bare minimum. Yeah, like right? Houston Zoo, like 25 or $30 a person. Right, and I think if you're a child, I think it's maybe like 16 or 17 so yeah. it's not even that big of a discount. Yeah, like the other day, we went to the, uh, what's called the uh, Renaissance Festival. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, we, we took we, Louis first got there. Back, yeah, yeah, like easily plus tickets, all the expensive. play placings inside. Like we did a, a pet, not petting zoo. What's called the, the pony ride. Oh, the pony ride, yeah. Right, like easily five or eight dollar just right. for three. Yeah, yeah and that's just for a little little circle around, little kind of merry-go-round style. Very yeah. Quick. Uh, and, and, and again, I remember when we went to the Morelia Zoo, Morelia Zoo right? <laughs> 25 again, pesos. 25, no, I think it was 20 pesos. 20 pesos. Right? So back then, that was $1, right? Yeah. And, and again, and it wasn't a very long ride either, but you could get five rides for the price of one or eight rides for the price of, of one. Uh, and, for, and, the, and, for the train riding, like in Techies, we went 25 pesos. Oh, yeah, for, for, put a little, little train, minutes. go around, five minutes, yeah. have fun. We go to Herman Park. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so five, five, seven dollar a person. Was it five dollars? Somewhere yeah, there. Yeah, five or six dollars a person for the same. There. It was a much bigger, nicer train, of, yeah. you know, of course, but uh, still, again, much <laughs> different thing. Or even, like, um, I know even the zoos here are less expensive. Now, I understand that maybe the standards of the zoo in the U.S. are a little right. bit nicer. I won't disagree with that. Uh, but, you know, just to take your, you know, your kid out, you know, the three-year-old doesn't care. Uh, you know, he sees a lion, he sees a lion, elephants, giraffes, and yeah. stuff. Uh, he's going to enjoy and have a good time. And then in Mexico City, the zoo is even free. It's free. Even if it's not right. the best zoo, but no. it's free, it's free. Right, yeah, it's part of the of the, of the park there. Yeah. Right? It's a huge park. You just walk in, it's a zoo, and all of a sudden you're in the zoo. You're like, oh, I didn't even realize I was really in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still nice. A lot of free stuff. So lots of museums are free, even here or Mexico City. Yeah, I know we, right. uh, we've we talked about it when we go to Puerto Vallarta. I want to go out to the water park out there. Oh, the water park. Which, which I think is like brand new, if I'm not, uh -huh. or pretty new, but yeah. well, with only a few years. Uh, I, I don't know the price on that, but I'm going to guess probably not very expensive. Yeah. I, I mean, my guess, and maybe I could tell you if, if I'm wrong down the line, uh, once we get back, right. maybe, but still maybe, be maybe, reasonable. maybe $10 a person. Right. I know maybe. you might have long the other day we watched a YouTube video. It was like $10 a person. Yeah, somewhere I, I saw there. it. I'd be surprised if someone And, the, and then the dad talked about the eating in the, play, the playground, the water park. Mm -hmm. The price is very reasonable. Right, not the like the U.S. eating in the U.S. Once, yeah. once they get you in, they get you in. They really uh, they yeah, like, like you took Louis to watch the uh, monster truck. Oh yeah, yeah, very right. expensive. I just yeah. saw on the credit card that uh, easily two hundred. <laughs> Shh, credit cards. <laughs> That's just crazy. And yeah, then, everything's very expensive. Twice. I mean, I mean, you talk about like uh, right, just something like buying popcorn. I think it was like twelve dollars or fifteen dollars. Like it's like cr crazy popcorn. For popcorn for popcorn. You know, uh, you know. Again, yeah. it, it's more about the experience, and, and right. again, I don't mind spending the money, to have fun with Louis, mm -hmm. and have him enjoy it. So he, you put the, the but popcorn that, bucket on his head. <laughs> but just the idea of spending twelve or fifteen dollars on popcorn is crazy. It uh, is. I mean, it's just like easily you go out to watch movie, one hundred dollars gone. Like oh yeah, family yeah. order some popcorn and coke. Yeah, I think I went yesterday when mm -hmm. I was out, and again, we're still talking about you know entertainment. I was looking at the yeah. movies because I had to do some waiting, uh -huh. and I think for one person, I think it was like one sixty five. Yeah, I think that's the now, VIP. Uh, mm. Yeah, maybe the VIP. Yeah, um, the VIP is about eight dollars. Right, so you're looking about eight dollars, right? Uh, or for like, I think maybe it's like the three D. Anyway, which is still right. very reasonable. Yeah, right? you know, if you're spending less than ten, it's very reasonable as compared to what movies cost now in the U.S. Uh, so you can being able to take your child out and do many more things at a much more reasonable price, 
I mean, just like everything, almost everything in Mexico, it's going to be much more affordable here. So bringing your kids and having taking your money and being able to spend more on your kids and have fun, you're definitely going to be able to do that here. Right? Yeah, like in the U.S., just any pet zoo easily, like $20. Oh, yeah, I think the one that was there in, in Willis I told yeah. you about was... That's why I was telling Ron, like, yeah, why, why we rush to go there? We go back to Mexico to do that. <laughs> animals are animal. A go to go, uh, yeah, a llama's exactly. a llama. <laughs> <laughs> That's no rush. Yeah, which is true, you know, again. So, yeah, um, what else about kids here? Oh, um, yeah, the one we really like the service here in many restaurants, mm. not just um, fancy restaurants, yeah, like some nice one we went, and also just what like service? Fast, <laughs> fast food restaurants, yeah. Which is what service? Like, uh, you mean the name? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't mind to mention the name. Like, Because uh, <laughs> you, you said the service. What service? Oh, yeah, the service. Let me get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't rush me. So, I mean, in those restaurants from what kind of level, they have a kid's service, which is a free playground. And, and, and nanny and service. And the nanny service. Right. <laughs> and then the important part, yeah. Yeah, we're coming up. <laughs> Wait, I gotta build up. <laughs> you got me impatient. I was like, tell them already. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the standing service. Yeah, uh, which again, technically is free, but. Obviously, it's not. Well, of course, if you don't hire the nanny, the girls to watch your kids. For example, if if we are there with Louis, play, we didn't use their service. You don't have to give them a tip. Right, right. And it's all just based on gratuity and how well they watch your kids, and of course, they appreciate the help. Yeah. Right? And, and I think another thing, as far as you know, you know, being able to play in those kind of areas or things like even in fast food places. I remember uh -huh. going back to the U.S. I remember when I was younger, all the fast food places used to have a lot of playgrounds, and they still do, but you just don't see them as much, mm -hmm. right? Um, which again, and they kind of switched over. I know last time on the way back, we stopped at the McDonald's and they had the little play area, but it was computer screens, uh, which again says a lot about you know, mm -hmm. where our society is kind of going. Yeah. Uh, instead of kids running around and playing, again, they just put computers. Uh, but here in Mexico, everywhere you go, you still kind of see those little indoor playgrounds. Yeah. All the fa I mean, they just opened up the KFC. Mm -hmm. They had a huge playground, yeah, brand new. brand new, uh, big space. So again, a lot of areas for kids to play, at least in those types of restaurants, which is nice. It's definitely a, a good uh, a pro, you know, if you looking for something quick, but the kids want to play, then go play yeah, in those little playgrounds. Yeah, and here in Mexico, not just the indoor, they also put it in outdoor. We saw a lot mm. of outdoor area. They have a playground for kids. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll have a little space in the back, right? A little yeah. outdoor playground. True, true. So it's definitely nice. When you go yeah. out, you definitely in, have that opportunity for the kids to play. And uh, let me add on another, another thing, like a, a food truck place in Caletalo. There's one. Yeah, they have an outdoor. It's a big. Yeah, yeah. But when parents are eating, drinking, so the kids are just playing there by themselves. Right. And again, it's all surrounded. It's all yeah. enclosed with fences because obviously it's a food truck park. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have the playground in the middle, which yeah. is nice. Right? Yeah. Like we traveled to Puerto Vallada. There's a big food truck. Oh, yeah. There too. You're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah I forgot about that one. There's also an outdoor kids playground, which is very thoughtful. That people need it. I don't remember any food truck area in the U.S. offer that service. Not that I can remember. I know I we haven't been to many, and obviously we haven't been all over the U.S., yeah. but Definitely that I can think of in Houston. No, not that I can think of. Yeah, no. maybe some bar, like at the bar we went in Potter. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, 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 the brewery, yeah. The brewery, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is true. So more, more places for kids to play. Uh, then I think kind of switching gears, I think mm -hmm. another good thing, definitely a pro, is just the medical care. Oh, the medical. Right? I know mm -hmm. we've talked about that before just in general, but when it comes to kids, obviously there's different needs. Uh, so like I know when we, when we first moved here, Louis was very young. Uh, we would take him to the pediatrician. I think at that time we were paying, again, the equivalent of like $35, $40 mm -hmm. uh, for a visit, which, again, is very reasonable. Again, not this is with us not paying insurance, so we don't have that, that monthly premium we have to play, uh, pay. So very reasonable. And now the only thing that was maybe a little bit more or kind of pricey would be the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so we're paying between maybe – how much are we paying? Yeah, for one vaccine, I remember it's quite expensive. Like maybe I thought $1,000, yeah, 2000 pesos? One, yeah, about the every – Equal to 100 US dollar. Right. Yeah. So let's say about 2,000 pesos, give mm -hmm. or take. A little, somewhere a little bit less and somewhere a little bit more. Uh, but again, I don't know. I can't speak from experience because in the US we had the insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, but my guess <laughs> would be if you don't have insurance in the US, those shots are probably very expensive too. Yeah. Uh, even, and, though they're, yeah. even though they're from the US. Yeah. Besides those vaccines they offer and also the doctors you choose, as many foreigners newly moved to Mexico, not everyone speaks good Spanish. So sure. they, they're too. Pediatricians speak good English. Well, yeah, yeah that we used. Yeah, uh, the there, we there were went. the two mm -hmm. uh, doctors in the same office, and both of them spoke pretty good English. Yeah. Uh, so again, you just have to do your research. You know, I know, uh, you know, 
like you said, when you definitely come in here and you don't know the language as well, if you're not well versed, you should definitely look for a doctor who is a little bit bilingual. When it comes yeah. to something as important mm -hmm. as your child's health, you definitely want to be able to understand and not get lost in translation. And there's a lot of doctors and pediatricians here in the area uh, yeah. that do, that are bilingual, which is great. You know, they, and again, they're very good doctors, excellent service, you know, very high tech, modern hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but then on the other end, they also have like in the pharmacias, and I know we've mentioned this before, uh, where they have their own doctor on staff. And again, this is a fully qualified doctor. And again, if you have something minor, a minor ache or just a small flu or cough that doesn't want to go away, well, what do you do? You take them there, right? And the doctor can uh, take a look at them. And again, depending on what's wrong, they can prescribe medicine right then and there. And they, at least here in Querétaro, and I know a lot of other places we've been to just work on gratuity, which is great. Uh, and so again, you can just tip them whatever you like. I think the only place I remember was in Monterrey uh, mm -hmm. where the, the, the service fee was 60 pesos, which again is not bad. That's $3. But did we pay, also pay the tip or just to pay the 60? No, they, 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 they just passed through the 60 and that was it. Okay, that was it. So right. it's very equal to pay a tip. Right, because that's mm -hmm. kind of what I would normally pay when I go to the doctor. I mean, I would be anywhere between one, between 50 and 100 pesos, yeah. uh, which I, yeah, I guess is fairly reasonable. And again, which makes that great in, in, in the whole system of Mexico is again, that, well, there may be a lot of people who don't have that much money. You know, they, you know, or, and they're a lot as advantage. So it's great that they can go get good care and they can just pay whatever they, they can afford, right? If they, they only pay 20, 30 pesos, they can get good medical care from a qualified doctor, which is great, especially yeah, for, for the convenience. child. Yeah, for right. Mexicans, they can go to public hospitals. Right, for That's more serious free. things. Right? Yeah. Or you can take your children to the public hospitals. Mm -hmm. But uh, for small things or just for the convenience fee. Yeah, definitely better mm -hmm. to go to those little farmacias that, that have a, uh, a medical or a doctor. Not all of them do. Right? But many of them do, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> so wherever you move to, you need to know your area. You know where they are. Oh, Not yeah. all pharmacies offer that service. Right, right, oh. right. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for, I mean, well, I'm sure we're missing a few. Right. So again, if anybody out there knows more things or uh, pros that we've missed, feel free to add them in our comments. Sure. But what about, um, I, we're not going to get too into deep, but what about some cons you know, about living out here? Yeah, I think we or just uh, briefly talk about like the especially like in the, the maintenance of all the playgrounds as parents. Oh, right. So better watch out the whole environment you put your kids into. Maybe there's some, some issue, something so with, broke. With, with the equipment. Right. So a holes in the ground. Yeah, that like the staircase or some rope is loosing. There's a hole there. So just watch out that. And also like the central plaza, they always have the... The gazebo, what's called it? The, like a pavilion. Oh, yeah, the, the gazebo, right? Yeah, gazebo. Oh, yeah, it's here, always here, a central. It's like a big pavilion. You step up. Um, right. people normally can stand in the main top. plaza, right? Yeah, in the main plaza. Watch out those things. You may find that some rail has a hole. <laughs> and that's from our experience here in Kaledalo. Yeah, from, in Kaledalo. <laughs> I mean, Kaledalo is a very nice city, yeah. but even for nice big city, you see those facilities got issues. Right. And so the, what and, about the small towns? Right. And again, and there's also like things, you know, even mm -hmm. in the plaza where like uh, tops for like meters and stuff are broken and they don't fix yeah, them right away. Like, I remember Louis that. did fall into that one, right? Yeah. Where, you know, his foot kind of fell up, you know, maybe up to his knee. Uh, and it was like, just wet and water. Nothing bad happened, of course. Mm -hmm. But I remember even going a couple of weeks later, and that same piece was still not there. Still there, right? yeah. Even even the cleaning lady on the street, right. the cleaning crew, and she took a picture, but they haven't. Uh, fixed they eventually that did, but they again, eventually. It, it was mm -hmm. like it's been a while. I don't know how long, but definitely it was definitely took weeks to fix. Yeah, uh, and also like go to the zoo, or parks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those yeah. as a parents, you're gonna watch out the mini your environment. Right. Yeah. Like, like some, I remember, yeah, some of the less mm -hmm. dangerous animals, they kind of use like a, a moat or dry moat yeah. uh, between like where they they are and. The exhibit of the animals and where you stand and they might have a roped off section yeah but you're right i do remember then part of it was not roped off it was just mm -hmm. open so yeah any little small child could just kind of get there and how kids are they like to throw things in big holes and they might get a little too close and whoop yeah <laughs> the accident can happen there. sure yeah right so again yeah you got to watch out for watch out. Mm -hmm. uh you know in parks it definitely could be an, an issue um what else yeah no, and for the tap the water is not drinkable here from the taps so sure. I always tell Louis, hey, don't drink it. If you brush teeth or anything, like close your mouth or spit it out. Right. Yeah, we're not mm -hmm. we're not exceptionally conscious. Right, right. We're like brushing teeth. We still Especially brush our teeth. Brushing teeth. But, but we still do. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people will say, don't even brush your teeth. We're not that. We're not that. Uh, uh, I guess crazy about it. You know, we'll, we'll still use the the tap water to brush yeah. our teeth and, and boil for things. And, and we're, we we 
tend to be okay with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm used to that. I grew up in China, so <laughs> yeah. just to spit it out. Yeah, yeah. It's not a big deal for right. us. You know, so uh, yeah, definitely need some bottled water for drinking, uh -huh. you know, and uh, yeah. So you, you got to watch out. Cause, yeah. and, and again, just like all parts of the world in the U.S. and stuff, you know, there's different parts of Mexico that are going to have better quality and lesser quality and terrible quality. Uh, so again, just as a caution. I just be careful with the water, especially yeah. the one you drink for sure. <laughs> yeah, and if your baby is young, uh, little, if you go to the public bathrooms, they may not have the changing table. So, oh, right, right. So it's, it's, it's pretty common big. just to change on the random places. You see a bench here in the plaza or somewhere hidden area. What are you going to do? You're going to yep. change your diaper. Yeah, be prepared to see you left. <laughs> and be prepared to see or do yourself to change your baby just on the chair next to you in a bench in a park in a corner yeah somewhere and, the, um, and the bring bring the wipers toilet paper everything yeah. yeah just just in case not every place i'll feel that oh, i hope you have that if you have a baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and, okay uh, i mean i know we're probably missing a few more cons um, i think overall if people were to ask you know would you bring your child to mexico again I was, like i said obviously yeah. we've done it twice mm -hmm. i would definitely say yeah i think overall uh you know the the pros do outweigh the cons. It's like we, we probably missed a few pros and a few cons out there, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, where can people to add on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, would, would I do it again a third time <laughs> if we left? Yeah, absolutely. I think Mexico is a good place for a child. Uh, there's lots of things for them to do. Uh, good, good quality care and education, things, you know, and for them to just have fun. Yeah, like any street food, Louis had it, we had it, we don't have issues. Yeah. So we, you Yet. don't need to be like <laughs> over cautions. Yeah. Street drinks, street food, don't offer to your kids. Yeah, so far we've been okay. Yeah, we've like been fine. You know, who knows what the future will bring, but <laughs> you know, up to this point, everything has been pretty good and safe, so we've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, like I said, and we mentioned a few times, let us know what you think in the, in the comment section. Give us a like, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Yeah, see you in our next, next episodes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, we forgot to tell people our podcast is every Sunday. So <laughs> now I say that. <laughs> our podcast is every Sunday. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.